On Tuesday, Candace, the first WNBA player ever with the stat line of 21 points, 10 assists, 9 rebounds, 4 steals, 2 blocks mm. in a game. Are you just, are you keeping, I mean, are you raising your level even more? Because we thought it was pretty good when you were winning all that other stuff I just mentioned. Well, see, I would always make fun of ESPN when they would have <laughs> stats like, first player to score 20 right. points <laughs> after only sleeping two hours yeah, and eating a burger before. Stuff, right? So I feel like that was kind of a little bit of that. Right. But On a Tuesday. Um, on a Tuesday, when it's yeah. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> No, um, I just feel like our team has been together for so long that mm -hmm. we know each other. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And so um, we just kind of fill in where we need to. Sometimes, some, some nights I have to do a lot. Some nights, I mean, I, you have NECA, Gumake, Chelsea Gray, Odyssey right. Sims on your team. You don't have to do too much, you know, how, often. How much smarter a player are you now versus maybe what you may be losing a little athletically? <gasps> or Yeah, no, it's true. <laughs> <laughs> um, I'm not. I'm not drop stuck, stuck Duncan anymore. Nobody's, uh, no, but I think I used to laugh when I would hear players say the game slows down when you right. understand it and yeah. you played it. And for me, I think just mentally trying to be ahead and know the steps because I can't waste energy, right. as, you, mm -hmm. as yeah. you alluded to. You know, you, you need those steps. You need that footwork. And um, that's kind of what I tried to do this offseason is just perfect that. I think they also figured out how to use you, right? Like Candace came into the league. She was like, okay, you go do everything. You go be LeBron. And there kind of there came a point over the last couple of years where like you and NECA found a role of like okay I'm gonna do this and you do this and these are my strengths and yours and like you know how to play off of each other now. I think a lot of that has to do with Brian Agler. I mean he's a fantastic coach um, that has put us all in a position. I mean if you look at our team, Chantel Lavender getting sixth woman of the year. Uh, mm -hmm. You look at Elena Beard getting defensive mm -hmm. player of the year. I think you know his system has allowed us to flourish. Yeah. Absolutely, and it's just fun to watch. And it's it's. We, always, we love basketball, so we're going to watch no matter what. But everybody is watching, and it feels like that. And then you see the numbers. It actually is like that. The WNBA has seen a 36% increase in viewership. Adults aged 18 to 49, which is the one you're supposed to go for, right? 29% jump in men in that age group. 50% increase in women. Does that make you feel good? Oh, wow, more people are watching? Or does it make you feel like, come on, where you guys been? No, I think anytime you're growing, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's always a positive. I know the last two years in the finals, we saw growth yep. um, just from excitement. And I think that's created by rivalries. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you think about NBA basketball, you think of, you know, the Celtics and the Lakers. Mm -hmm. And I mean, you know, for me, I was a Bulls fan. So it was Bulls and Detroit, you know, yeah. that, that battle. Yeah. So I think it's something for fans to get and be a part of. Mm -hmm. And I think a lot of that has to do with it being a five game series. Because if when it was a three-game series yeah. before, it was like when you got into the series, it was already over. Yeah. Yep. Mm -hmm. So now at least teams can kind of follow. They can see the adjustments that we make. And really, the game grows in the playoffs. Yep. That's where that's where numbers rise and, and things well, happen. The way you guys do your playoff seedings, too, which is different from the NBA, has created this great rivalry with you and the Lynx. And you guys, even though you're in the same conference, can meet keep meeting in the finals. And that's been tremendous. These games have been that's, insane. That's what I wish the NBA... I mean, I know there's a lot more miles yeah. that go into mm -hmm. it, but, I mean, the West is getting out of control. Right. <laughs> I <laughs> mean... <laughs> when, you, when, you see, when you see what we all see in it, the NBA, what, what is your reaction to that? I just would hate to be in the West because we're thinking of playoffs, but you have to play those teams three, yep. four, five times. I mean. But that's no excuse in the playoffs because we spread out the playoffs. Right. You know, so if you have the best teams in the West, like Houston and Golden State, like you guys have it in the finals, I think it's doable because we don't jam the season in, to, uh, in the playoffs the way we do in a regular season. I'm, I'm... Well, my argument would be if you're playing Eastern Conference teams, mm -hmm. your seed would be different than if you're playing yeah. Western right. Conference right. teams right. more. They'd have to so balance I think the it would schedule. almost have to be like a super conference. Yeah, well, they'd have to balance the schedule during the regular season because, yes. as you say, it's not fair for if you all, if everyone gets in on record, just the top 16 teams, yes. mm -hmm. the teams in the West playing each other more will have worse records mm -hmm. than teams in the East. But also, I hate to be the buzzkill here, I keep saying this, <laughs> to make a change in the way they do the playoffs in the NBA, two-thirds of the owners would have to vote for it to happen. Yeah. The Eastern Conference owners are never going to vote themselves out of the playoffs. <laughs> it is not going to happen. We, I, I get it, but we just did you know, It's yeah. not going to happen. I do want to ask you about LeBron coming to L.A., though. Wait, he's this coming is your, to L.A.? I know. I, I don't know. If, I'm so glad You've I could deliver road. this oh, news man, to you. I know. So much in You're going to see know. him in the hallways at the Staples Center now. Um, what secret is tunnel. Excited? Be careful. Secret, exactly. There's many secret tunnels we can get into here. Um, by the way, she knows about the real secret tunnel. Really, she doesn't. No, it's not the um, what, what do you think that is going to be like for the franchise, for both franchises, for L.A. basketball in general? I think the city of Los Angeles, I mean, he's King James. Right. He's a star. <laughs> um, 
he's built for LA. And I think that that's why he came out west. <laughs> I always talk about how west coast is the best coast. I was born, raised in, you know, Midwest. Yes. And I came west and I'm, I'm not planning on not going back. <laughs> so I think that's similar. I mean, you know, as you get older, you come out west. Right. And, um, Work for you me. Know? Yeah, there People you go. People don't get this, but like, Candace is the longest running superstar in LA now that mm -hmm. Kobe's retired. Kobe's been here, <laughs> Kobe was here for that. 20 years. <laughs> and then it's kind of you. Right? I mean, most of the, everybody else who's been here is just, just getting here. So it's like kind of incumbent upon you now to. Well, I, I, uh, I mean, I, I hope he comes. I hope we make it to the playoffs and maybe they'll sit and watch our, yeah. watch our games mm -hmm. in, the, in the playoffs and, and bring that, you know, obviously we have a common tie yeah. in magic. Absolutely. Um, but I think that he's always supported women's basketball.